Hi everyone, I'm Dan. And I'm Kika. And today we're gonna go over all the gear we use that keep us warm and dry while winter sailing in the Arctic. <laughs> thing as bad weather only bad clothing uh says everyone who lives in a place that has crappy weather and says no one in the tropics <laughs> where there's good weather and sunshine and you don't need clothing you see we didn't start our journey sailing wearing all the ge needed gear for the arctic we actually started in the caribbean where we needed nothing else but shoes a bikini and a pair of shorts shoes optional i don't even think i own shoes for most of the time we're in the caribbean <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> and a good rain jacket. Well. And honestly, even that is debatable. I think at some time we use trash bags. That is fancy. Yeah? I like it. Yeah, because when it's raining, it's still warm. And after three years in the Caribbean, we started making our way north with the goal of eventually making it to the Arctic Circle. <laughs> so we knew we were going to need a lot of gear. Uh, I grew up in Canada, in British Columbia, so I was kind of used to winter and cold, but on a sailboat, it's actually a bit different. Because the reality is, when sailing in the cold, the gear that you're actually wearing can make or break your experience. For sure. So it is important to know what gear can keep you comfortable, warm, and dry. So today we're gonna go over all of it. Yes. Uh, everything that we've sort of accumulated over the last two years and everything we found that works. We're gonna start on the outside and work our way in. In short summary, if you <laughs> want to know what we've been using is four layers because you have the wool thermal layers, the fleece layer, the insulation layer, which is your puffer jacket, and then the shell. Uh, and yeah. if you if, if that is enough watch the rest of the video. <laughs> if that's enough information for you, then don't watch the rest of the video. But if you do wanna hear more details about each of the layers that we use, then stay tuned and uh, let's get on it. First things first, ski goggles. We actually got ski goggles to go skiing, believe it or not, while we were in Norway. And um, I think we've actually used them more sailing than we ever used them skiing. Yeah, that's they true. They became more useful than we thought they were gonna be. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad we got these back when we went skiing at Christmas. There was a reason you wear ski goggles when you're skiing. The snow hitting you in the eyes kind of hurts and stings and it's hard to see. And these actually do help um, increase the contrast on a ski slope and offshore where you've got fog and snow. Yeah, we found these to be very useful actually. I mean, if you think about it, if, you, if you've if you sailed in heavy rain, you know it hurts already, but yeah. turn those every single drops into ice. Yeah, and the snow wasn't quite so bad. It was like the little hail pellets Yeah, were awful. It was like standing in front of somebody with like a fully automatic BB gun, just like <laughs> shooting you in the face. So uh. being able to completely cover your face was great. Next up, let's talk about gloves. There are two different types of gloves that we wear when we're sailing. The first kind is what Dan is wearing. Yeah, so these are more of like winter sort of ski style gloves. It's a Gore-Tex outer shell. And then inside of that, we've got our down puffy layer. And then inside of that, we've got a Merino wool um, five finger, like normal glove liner. Mm -hmm. We found this works really well when we were on watch or autopilot was on and we weren't actively trimming sails or helming uh, because you don't really have much dexterity but they keep your hands super super warm and really really dry mm -hmm. and the merino wool glove liner helps getting your hand in and out because if your hand gets a little bit sweaty or a little bit wet it's really hard to put these on especially multiple layers especially with all this extra gear so it meant you can like take your hand out do some fine motor skills i think kika your pair even has the little uh touch screen so we could like use yes. the chart plotter. Mine doesn't, but that would have been a nice bonus. And then when your hands get cold, put them back in. So yeah, that was more for like non-active sailing. And what Kika's rocking is what we use when we we're actually like helming, trimming sails, running the dinghy, yeah. cleaning the boat, all that. What I'm wearing are neoprene gloves. We actually found them at a outdoor store and they are technically ice climbers glove. <laughs> I mean, they're climbing ice. They're touching cold things. They, 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 they need, need their dexterity. hands. They need their hands to stay warm and right now my hands are sweating because mm -hmm. we're inside <laughs> and as a 
bonus, this is because it's so grippy, I use this glove to catch the drone. Um, as you can see by the holes. <laughs> by the... the <laughs> by the holes in it. <laughs> where I could have lost my finger. <laughs> Instead, I have a nick in the glove, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> which kind of goes to the one con about those gloves. They're not very durable. Rope work and stuff, we had to be careful, but these ones, if you let a line slip through your hand, they'll just rip that neoprene apart. They certainly keep your hands warm, especially if your hands start to get wet. Oh, I can take off my gloves out. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, it's we, like wet. <laughs> we, need air we need some air conditioning in here. <laughs> Next up, we've got our life jackets. These ones are made by Timo. Oh, we really, really like these ones. They're very comfortable. There's very flat buckles on the back that have like a neoprene cover. So when you're sitting down or laying down in the cockpit, they don't hurt, they don't dig into your spine. There's plenty of space for a personal locator beacon. And we also love that they have the back toe tether, which means when you, if you ever did fall off, uh, it flips you around so that you're getting towed on your back. Mm -hmm. So your face is open to the air rather than getting dragged face down underwater, which greatly increases your chances of actually surviving. It's a much more comfortable position to be in the water. We've done a whole nother video about why we chose them. We'll link it and card it. We actually built these tethers as well. Uh, back in Norfolk, I believe. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't say we recommend building your own tethers, but if you trust your own sewing skills and you have the right material, I don't really think that it's a necessarily bad way to go. The reason we built them is because most tethers on the market we find to be too long. We like having a nice long stretchy side that we move around the boat on and then a very, very short side, which means when we get somewhere, we can clip off. It's kind of like having a third hand. It means you can move around with both hands and actually like work or winch or reef or fix whatever you need to fix. And you're very securely attached to the boat. Yeah. And so we built our own. They've held up really, really well. But if you're uncomfortable building your own, we would recommend finding a tether with a short one and a long one and um, it'll be much safer than just two long ones, or worse, just a single long one. And that's it for the lab jacket. <laughs> All right, next on the list is the red elephants in the room. <laughs> We're the red elephants in the We're room. We're the red elephants. The... There's a lot of stuff underneath here. <laughs> yeah, what sailors called a foul weather jacket, which <laughs> basically they are very thick, durable shell jackets. Yeah, I think the difference between a foul weather jacket like this and almost anything else on the market for hiking or backpacking or camping is that this is actually pretty heavy and mm -hmm. it's pretty durable because on a sailboat, you're not really concerned with ultra lightweight because you're not carrying it around in a backpack. So these are pretty durable. The cuff system is a little bit different. The collar is quite tall. The hood is of course high vis yellow because that's what makes it a foul weather jacket. <laughs> and it's got uh, an awesome Mouth high protection. collar that comes around cover your mouth so that you can not take waves in the face and it helps keep water from going down inside. So the basic material, it's still like a waterproof membrane similar to Gore-Tex. There's a lot of different versions of it now. Uh, these ones are made by Zyke. And these are the new ones that we just got. They're OFS 800, which replaced our old Ice Attack 2s that we've been wearing for the last Three years? Three years almost. Yeah. We don't have much experience wearing these jackets because we just received them from <laughs> Zyke. But the ones that we were wearing for the past three years have been really, really helpful mm -hmm. for from crossing the Atlantic to sailing up the coast of Norway to all the way to Svalbard and down to Iceland. And so there are some pros about it and there are some cons that we've discovered over the years. A big pro is that Zyke makes really good um, offshore gear. The mm -hmm. material is almost uncomparable. Ours felt new after three years of yeah. complete abuse. And they kept us super dry. They I mean, kept we us wore them dry. almost every day for three years. So now for the cons of the ice attack is, for one, the hood was way too small. <laughs> so I almost never used a hood, especially because I had hair mm -hmm. and it came up to like... It was even too small for me. It, it kept your forehead pretty exposed. Mm -hmm. So it, wouldn't, it didn't go down nearly as far to keep your head dry. Yeah. And then the other thing was the sleeves were way too short. And especially in a cold, it's kind of a crucial thing because it meant all the layers underneath your, our shells kept getting wet. And if mm -hmm. they get wet, they kind of soak all the way up to your arm and your arm gets cold and then your whole body gets cold and it's just downhill from here. Which is yeah. no bueno. Not good. Uh, luckily, Zach fixed both of these issues with this new uh, line, the OFS 800. Mm -hmm. We're excited to start testing them out. Unfortunately, we're not in the Arctic anymore. We kind of wish we had them for a small <laughs> part <laughs> because all of our crazy 
layers fit underneath this. Yeah, um, these are definitely like a pretty big loose cut. Yeah. Um, I'm a medium and there's plenty of space for me in here to have tons of layers. Con with this one is that Zyg doesn't make a OFS 800 women's fit. Mm -hmm. So I am wearing a men's line which feels a little bit baggy on me. I mean, it's perfect for the Arctic because you can put all the layers, but as soon as we go into a warmer place, mm -hmm. it's going to feel like I have too much space. I wish they made a offshore women's line, but other than that, I think everything is pretty solid. All right, let's strip. Okay. Underneath our shell jackets, we have shell sallow pets, yeah. as they're called, which are pants with a bib suspenders. These are great because they keep you waterproof pretty much all the way up to your armpit. So with these combined with our boots, we can pretty much jump into waist deep water while we're trying to get the dinghy to shore or setting stern lines and we stay dry. Mm -hmm. uh, these are also their new OFS 800 line, which are brand new. So we haven't really had a chance to wear them yet, but our old ones were the Isotac 2 version, very similar material, very similar cut layout features, everything. And those ones were awesome. We probably wore the pants more than we wore the jackets. Sometimes you don't need to wear a jacket, but it's always good to keep your legs dry. And they have like reinforcing on the butt and the knees so that when you're sitting down and moving around the boat, you're not ripping up the nice waterproof membrane. Um, should I say like a pro tip about rinsing it? Yeah. yeah. One pro tip about the shell before we take it off, it's definitely a good idea to rinse it with fresh water. <laughs> before you hang it up to dry, because if salt dries on it, the salt acts like an absorber of moisture in the air, like uh, condensation from breathing and stuff. And it'll always kind of feel wet and damp. Mm -hmm. But if you just do a quick rinse with fresh water before coming inside or wear it out in a fresh rainstorm before coming inside to dry it out, then when it does dry, it feels dry and it also keeps the membrane clean, which makes it waterproof for a lot longer. And now we can take our layers Ooh. off. I gotta oh, stand I up for this one. I Ugh. can't take it off just yet. I need to talk about the boots. Oh, you talk about the boots. And speaking of keeping us dry, there's one more thing before we take off our foul weather layer that is amazing. And that is our foul weather boots. We've had these for such a long time. Time. I think mine was one of the early, early versions of Zyke boots, and I got them before we crossed the Atlantic. And These Dan the has a newer version. Newer. We actually kind of like the older ones a little bit better. Yes. Kika's boots have held up better with less wear and tear than these new ones. And I actually found that the back of the heel here was really stiff with this rubber. So I actually had to carve that out so that when uh, I was standing and going forward, it didn't like rub my Achilles heel. Uh, but yeah, after three years, they're starting to show signs of significant abuse and they're not quite as waterproof as they used to be as we found out in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, they've held up really, really well. Mm -hmm. We've also abused the hell out of them by wearing them on shore, hiking in them, uh, dragging the dinghy up over rocks, things and you're mud. probably not supposed to do with foul weather boots, but they've held up pretty well. The nice part is they've got sort of like a shell outer material similar to the Ice Attack 2 and everything else we've been wearing. And then inside is neoprene. So this is the insulation layer that actually keeps you super, super dry. And then you put your salopette pant over top, cinch it down on this rubber grippy bit, and then you pull this up over top of that, and you get a really nice gasket down around your feet. So you can jump out of the boat, and not get wet. I think they might be coming out with a new series too. So we'll be excited to try those out because uh, these ones need to be retired. Yeah. All right. Now we can take our And now off. we can take our pants off. <laughs> Now we can take our first layer. Oh, and our boots as well. All right, and now for the cherry on top of the cake, the Oof. blueberry of the apple, let's talk about <laughs> the, our insulation layer. And this is what I think makes spending winter in Norway enjoyable. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's also snowing right now. This might be my favorite piece of gear that we purchased the yeah, whole time. We call them our, our super puffs. It's like wearing a sleeping bag. It's one thing when you're out hiking and moving and walking around and, and doing boat work or hoisting sails or getting ready to leave the dock, but once you start just sort of sitting still for a while, it gets cold quick, especially when everything starts to get wet. We spent time on anchor <laughs> when it was below freezing. We spent time um, on the boat when it was minus 20 degrees mm -hmm. and wearing these 
we just didn't even, it didn't bother us at These all. These were just like this little slice of happiness yeah. that you could look forward to. Well, if you're curious, it is now midnight. That's the midnight sun. Oh, putting this thing on was just like a little slice of happiness because you just put it on and you're instantly warm. Or, um, yeah, waking up on anchor before we start the wood stove. You just come out of bed, put this on. <sighs> and there is a difference between wearing synthetic and mm -hmm. wearing down jackets. Down thinks, uh, down, down, what's the word I'm looking for? Tens. Tens. <laughs> <laughs> Down tends to be more packable, mm -hmm. and so if we're hiking, for instance, which we which we tried to do a lot of in Norway, it's easy to put it in your backpack and just wear it when it's cold. The issue with down versus synthetic is that when down gets wet, it doesn't get dry. <laughs> it also, yeah, it loses uh, it loses its loft. It just yeah. kind of becomes this wet little sad puppy dog of a thing. <laughs> a, a wet little duck. Yeah. It smells like a duck too, actually. <laughs> Yeah. And the problem is, as soon as it gets wet, it doesn't keep you as warm versus mm -hmm. synthetic. Um, it's heavier and it's a little bit less packable, but if you're only wearing it to sail, then it probably would be a better option because... Yeah. We do take these on cold hikes yeah. uh, and winter camping and stuff, so we opted for the down, even though it is like a little bit more of a pain in the butt to maintain if it does get wet. I made the mistake multiple times to uh, ignore the fall weather layer and just wear this one yeah. when I went outside to trim the sail or something just because it was easier. And then the and, one wave. And as soon as it gets like a little bit of salt water in there, it mm -hmm. kind of soaks the entire jacket. And I remember we pulled it out of the locker and it was still yeah. wet. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind. If you are getting a down jacket, you will need to be careful not accidentally getting it wet. We found it not to be too bad. Wash it with some down soap mm -hmm. and then you throw it in a dryer with a couple of tennis balls and it fluffs it right back up again. So we've washed these jackets a ton and they've held up just fine. Ta-da, all right. So yeah, the cool thing about these and why we got them is because they can, they're super packable and you can use them as a pillow. Yeah. So when we go camping in the winter and stuff, cause you're not wearing this inside your sleeping bag, you turn it into your pillow and yes. it's got like a nice mesh layer on the back. So it's still breathable and it still lets the moisture out. And then you get like a really nice down pillow out of it. So multi-use, multi-function, we love them. Okay. Let's talk about hats. As you can tell, I've got quite the collection. Yeah, so when it comes to winter hats, <laughs> there's two types of hats that I personally use, and that depends on uh, one, how cold it is, and two, what my hair situation is at the time. If it's really, really cold, usually I go with this option, which is a really thick wool hat, and inside of it, I put like a little liner mm -hmm. fleece hat. Um, and I put my hair down as far as I can into a braid and I just like bloop, put it on. <laughs> and if <laughs> if my hair is like this or it's not as cold and I'm not worrying about my head getting too wet and too cold, then I just wear like a, a headband type. As long as my ears are protected and my forehead is protected, I usually am fine. I'm, I'm modeling your headband. Yeah, these are my these are my different headbands. This is the fall collection. <laughs> the winter collection. No. <laughs> this actually is from Svalbard and it's part wool, part possum. Yeah possum fur and it's super soft it's too so soft. love it and then dan has one version of all of this so i usually wear this exact same hoodie we'll talk about in a second but it has a hood so that's my first hat because i always <laughs> have it with me uh i also have just like a merino wool thin liner that i sometimes wear sometimes I wear underneath this one but this is like my all-time favorite hat that we got in norway mm -hmm. and we got it like a tourist shop that's yeah. why it has like these beautiful uh norwegian snowflake designs but what's really cool about this one is that it's wool on the outside so it's very durable and it keeps your head very warm but then on the inside it's fleece so it's very soft on your skin because raw wool up against your face and your skin sometimes doesn't feel so yeah. good and the really neat part is in the middle there's a third liner that's windproof and actually reflects heat back into your head so although it's feels relatively thin it's so warm mm -hmm. uh this is like the only hat that i have and it's the only hat that i needed yeah and other than that yeah i'd wear the hood on this or the hood on my puffy jacket if it was really cold and i have the headband version of that same hat yeah which they're, they're awesome yeah. um so if you're gonna go with one hat try to find one that has multiple layers because the only downside to an all knit wool hat is that it's not really windproof mm -hmm. so it does keep you warm it does provide that insulation layer but it doesn't protect you from the wind 
All Excellent. right. And uh, so I can take off my hat now then. Oh, we didn't talk about these. You got dressed wrong again. I got, I got dressed wrong. So <laughs> this is supposed to be above <laughs> this. But yes, the last layer of insulation that we didn't always wear, but sometimes definitely needed and definitely appreciated were puffy salopettes. These ones are also by Zyke. We've had them since the beginning mm -hmm. and they're fantastic. Amazing. Uh, they're synthetic, not down. So they're, they don't provide quite as much loft as a down one would, but if they get wet, you just rinse them in the sink, hang them up to dry and they're easy to maintain. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a nice big zip down the front so they're easy to get in and out of. And the really cool part is, uh, from the knee down, from the knee down, <laughs> it's just a very thin, stretchy, like sort of spandex material because that's the part that goes into your boot. So you don't need the big puffy layer to be down inside your boot because the boot already provides insulation. Speaking of insulation, we also have insulation for our feet. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but they have definitely been useful in the past. We call these our dragon boots. When you're sitting in a cold and you're not moving a lot, the first things that get really really cold are your fingers and your toes like your extremities and so we had the glove system mm -hmm. like nailed down but and we pockets <laughs> sometimes you just use your pockets. pockets there's no pockets for your feet but uh, but but the last thing that we couldn't figure out is how to keep your feet warm and mm -hmm. i i get cold feet so quickly yeah. <laughs> that that was kind of an issue and we found these and we loved them for a while but the issue with them is just like the puffer jackets as soon as they get wet it does, it's not really as helpful yeah. anymore. They're meant more for like camping and backpacking because they're super tiny and lightweight, like yeah. all things down. But yeah, if they got wet, no bueno. They don't, some of them have sort of a rubber sole on the bottom, which helps to keep the bottom from being wet. But the main problem is when you're standing on them, it compresses the insulation on the bottom, which means your feet still get cold because all of the cold in our boat is in the floor, bilge level, ocean, all the cold air drops down there. Mm -hmm. So they're great for sitting around like off watch or like while you're editing or working, you'd wear these because they keep your feet nice and toasty. But for actual everyday use, we found them uh, to be not so good. And we ended up replacing them with, oh, these. Uh, we found these halfway through the winter in Norway. These are all wool. They're like a hard pack. I don't really quite understand felt wool and they do have a, like a rubber grippy sole. So we found these to be amazing. Yeah. We actually found ourselves using these more often than actually wearing our fall weather boots. Yeah. Because if it's not actually raining or, or actively snowing outside, we would wear these and we could just sail with them. They're mm -hmm. super grippy so we could be on deck. Because the yeah. bottom is the same thick wool liner that the rest of it is. So when you're standing on it, it doesn't compress and your feet stay super, super warm. And there's also a lot of space in there to have like wool socks and have that air insulation layer. We're never getting rid of them. All right. Ugh. So underneath our puffy insulation, we almost always wore some version of another insulation layer. Kika usually rocks some sort of wool sweater and I did at the beginning, but then I found this sort of a fleece sweater, which I absolutely love. It kind of feels magic how warm it keeps me for how thin it is. And because it's not directly on the skin, it doesn't necessarily need to be wool. And because it's not really getting wet or, or providing too much insulation, it doesn't really need to be down. So this is that sort of extra layer. in between extra layer that once we took off all of our sailing gear, this is what we would be wearing um, in the boat off watch or if the heaters are running or the wood stove is on, we could usually just wear this. But this is kind of just our everyday attire. Mm -hmm. And it pairs well with a nice pair of fleece pants. The nice part about fleece is that it's synthetic and I've had these pants since I was like 14 or something like that. They never seem to die. And they're just a really good inexpensive layer uh, to just add to the collection. As soon as I met Dan, I knew about these pants because they're just green and there's no way to avoid it. <laughs> they're like <laughs> with the frog green, they're great. And I've been looking for a pair of pants like these since the early days and mm -hmm. I could never, ever, ever found one until we made it to Norway and we went to this outdoor store and they didn't have it in the adult section, but they had it in the kids section. <laughs> and so since I'm small, I got myself a 12 year old <laughs> size fleece yeah. pants and they fit perfectly and they've been a game changer. You got dressed wrong again? I tried to not. But we practiced yesterday <laughs> getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. 
<laughs> okay, let's talk about... You guys on the morning report know what we're talking about. The last mid-insulation layer is, is, is socks. Suckies! These ones are 100% wool, so they're super warm and super awesome, but also kind of itchy. And if you just have sort of wet feet and a coarse wool sock inside of a boot, um, sometimes it didn't feel so good on my feet. Yeah. So underneath that, I would usually wear like a silk hiking sock, uh, which is a, a double sock layering system is something we kind of copied from some of the long distance hikers out there who claim it prevents blisters. We don't walk that much in our foul weather boots, but it definitely helps your foot kind of move around in the boot and be more comfortable, we found. But one thing we did learn quite quickly is that more socks doesn't necessarily mean more heat in your feet. Ooh, that rhymed. Ooh, that was a good nice. one. Nice, yeah. Uh, inside of our boots, there's a limited amount of space and filling that space up with socks doesn't necessarily mean your feet are warmer. It tends to add more constriction to mm -hmm. your feet, which reduces blood flow, which actually makes your feet colder. So my boots are a full size bigger than my normal street shoes so that I can fit lots of socks in there. But yeah, uh, a one thick wool sock and a liner sock was usually all I wore to stay super warm and dry. So unlike Den, my boots fit on my feet a little bit more snugly. Mm -hmm. So I did not want to do the two layers because it would just get my feet a little bit too tight inside of my shoes. So what I do, I just rock one layer merino wool thick sock. It's really thick, but it's merino wool, which means it doesn't get itchy. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to put a smaller liner inside of it. So I just have this one layer. It seems to be working just fine. As long as you have room inside of your boots to kind of let your foot breathe a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. One more accessory that I found pretty helpful I and cold are <laughs> my little ear socks. Little Mickey we'll Mouse ears. <laughs> you just snap them on right and they usually just stay there and what i do i put these underneath my beanie or my wool headband because my ears i don't know why but when it's cold my ears actually hurt mm -hmm. and that's been a problem for a very long time and so as much heat that i can get in my ear the better i don't think i've ever put these on before no they're good they just snap into place that's so cool it keeps this like the oh these are probably a little bit too small they come in different sizes so definitely make sure that you get the right one for your ears oh those are cool mm -hmm. i've never worn these before they keep like that little i'm probably gonna talk extra loud they keep that little <laughs> <laughs> they just keep that little like tip of your ear from freezing off in the in the winter yeah so if yeah. you have if you are like me and then you suffer from like cold ear syndrome <laughs> cold ear syndrome <laughs> then definitely invest in one of these they're not expensive we got them on amazon we'll just link everything down below uh, yeah, and that's that's it for the for that layer. Let's strip. Wow, 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 wow. All right. Oh! Ah! I'm gonna take this layer off. And now we are down to the base of it all. The first layer, the important one. This the is like core. Our, our second skin. The second skin. Well, I don't think we ever took these off in like two years, except maybe to shower. We discovered merino wool. Yeah right before Atlantic crossing because we, we knew we needed thermals underneath our flat mm -hmm. weather to cross the North Atlantic. And uh, to our surprise, when we made it to the other side, our clothes did not smell bad. We did it not feel like we had to have a shower right away, or even though we were inside of our of our cocoons of, of flat weather gear for 18 days mm -hmm. nonstop. We were kind of quite surprised at how well it worked. The really cool part about it and why it's so amazing is that the bacteria that's sort of excreted from your skin when you sweat normally grows and starts to ferment and decay and that's what actually smells bad which is why after you sweat it smells bad. But in merino wool it doesn't allow that bacteria to decay. It doesn't like have the right environment for mm -hmm. it to do that. So you still sweat and it dries it out quickly and it evaporates and it never starts to like decay and rot, so it never smells bad, which is amazing. That's almost it. That's almost it. We have one more layer, however, I because know. if you're talking about base layer, you can't stop at the second base layer <laughs> to go all the way to the basics, which is- The base base layer. Underwear. I don't always wear a bra, but sometimes it's cold enough that it does make a small difference to have that extra layer on your your little cha-chas. <laughs> <laughs> 
once you get down to the really thin stuff, it's not really a warm insulation layer. Um, it's more just to help evaporate and keep sweat off your skin. And so a lot of our t-shirts actually are mm -hmm. now merino wool too. And it just wears so well and you don't have to wash it as often. So it doesn't um, break down as quickly either. Yeah. But, um, but that is it. I don't think we're going to go any lower than this layer. <laughs> not on this channel. <laughs> not yet, on though. this channel. Head over to our OnlyFans <laughs> page. <laughs> He's just kidding. We don't have oh, that. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, we've been wearing thermals for far too long. Yeah. And I think we're both pretty excited to get to a place where this is all we wear yeah. again and get a nice suntan going. So after we take all of this clothes off and we're ready to go to bed, <laughs> we crawl into some more down deliciousness. We also have down sleeping bags that we keep inside of these throw pillows. So yep. they look classy and they stay nice and lofted. And they're also down because we, these are our camping and backpacking sleeping bags, so they compress super tiny. However, if you're just getting a sleeping bag for a sailboat, I would probably recommend synthetic. synthetic if you're yeah. not worried about like the weight or the packability. But these are fantastic. This was like our second most happy time because you're off watch, you can finally curl into the sleeping bag and you just stay warm for six hours and it was amazing. We know this was a very in-depth video and these were a lot of layers, but also keep in mind that what we showed you were mostly for the extreme scenarios. Like yeah, like the coldest of the, the cold. coldest of the coldest. We mix and match a lot of our layers based on the temperature. Sometimes we don't wear half of what we just showed you. But the <laughs> but the merino wool base layer, the thermals and the sh outer shell almost always stays the same. Yes. And then it's just mix and matching the insulation layers to match your personal temperature. Some people are just colder, some people are just warmer and the environment that you're in. But we always found that offshore we always wanted like one more layer than the same temperature on mm -hmm. land there's just something about the ocean and the environment and the humidity or something that just minus 10 on land and minus 10 offshore are completely different temperatures yeah. so that's why we almost always opted for a four layer system not just a three which is sort of the standard system yeah that's right but i hope you find this uh video useful we'll see you, we'll see you guys time. next time cheers gonna put this on. Is this gonna be our ah. ice cream?